future. Um, so don't don't expect this to to happen tomorrow. So um, today. So two days ago, we, we've seen a uh, uh, we've seen a symmetric update mechanism called how L two, um, and uh, having a symmetric update mechanism is uh, has some really nice properties uh, that uh, enable some really cool stuff. Just just to remind everybody, this is what L two looks like. That's the one you've already seen. It's not the only symmetric update mechanism, though. It was predated by this stuff. Um, Anybody know? Uh, anybody seen this before? Okay. Um, so this was this was basically my first attempt at, at creating a uh, a duplex micropayment channel or a micropayment uh, micropayment channel that can go both ways. Um, basically, what uh, what uh, what we did was have time locks and have them decrease over time. So this this all has, has time lock one hundred, and the first update has time lock ninety nine. 100, 100, and so on. Um, and every time you do a replacement, you basically uh, count down on one of these levels, and then basically just uh, uh, just make sure that this is uh, is confirmable slightly before the other stuff is confirmable. Um, back then, I didn't realize this, but um, but what we did was basically have this invalidation tree, which is used to sort of count down time. Uh, but what you have here is uh, are basically simple micropayment channels. So these are um, uh, these are unidirectional payment channels. And what you do is you have the structure of uh, uh, of an update mechanism, and then something built on top of it, right? Because if you uh, if you have an update mechanism, the only thing that you're basically doing is having uh, uh, having some way of uh, of creating a transaction eventually. That might create some outputs, right? That's all we basically try to do. Um, in in Lightning, it happens to be the balances of the two parties and HGLCs, but really, the uh, uh, there is not much of a difference to having any construction of of transactions on top of these outputs that you're guaranteed will uh, will eventually be created or will not be created in the case you remove them later on. So we can actually have this. Uh, we, we can actually have these kind of settlement transactions kick off other stuff, right? So, okay, but why do we care about this? Well, for starters, you can do stuff like multi-party channels. Multi-party channels is uh, is basically um, a bunch of people gather, put some money into uh, on the table, and uh, then uh, decide how to split it again. Right. So the initial uh, the initial setup is basically that uh, everybody puts in five uh, five bitcoins, and we are guaranteed that we will get five bitcoins out at the end. But since we now have this construction here, we can actually iteratively send back and forth uh, forth money and basically replace this state with any other state we want. And the advantage here is that we didn't have to create multi hop payments. To uh, to ma uh, make channel adjustments between uh, in inside of our group, so we actually have a, a setup as if we had a complete graph between us in terms of lightning channels, each with the full capacity. So you increase liquidity, you increase uh, increase flexibility of the funds that you uh, that you're using, uh, and um, and have a lot of freedom. And you could then also start building. Channels on top of this stuff, right? Uh, so that's basically the idea of uh, of channel factories. Is basically you have you have the setup transaction, and then you have this the settlement transaction that in turn then splits funds into smaller groups, and uh, and you can then uh, you can then have channels built on top of this bigger group. You can split them and uh, and really have uh, have. Uh, um, have just uh, the yellow and the pink one uh, talk to each other uh, while we still have com control over the entirety of, of your funds. Uh, anybody know? So if we have this thing here, right, where we can freely send back and forth money between any two uh, uh, endpoints, why would we then start 
to do stuff like this, where we create channels, where we split out funds and create sub uh, contracts basically in our bigger contract. Anybody? Yeah. You don't need to get everybody to sign the same thing. Exactly. So the, uh, the issue here is that in order to move these funds or to update this contract here, you basically need everybody to sign off. Everybody needs to be aware of what happens in those. And if you, uh, if you want to have sort of a private session with somebody else, then, uh, uh, then you might sort of say, okay, we now talk only about these four Bitcoins, and then we go off and, uh, and do our discussions between ourselves. And then when we come back, we only settle the, 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 uh, the aggregate of what we do. Uh, it, also, uh, it also means that if the yellow participant goes away, then this channel still uh, still remains active because well on this one we don't need we don't need signatures from from the yellow uh, participant right so we can basically drop this contract onto the blockchain uh, well this this state here uh, this one will eventually be resolved this one will eventually be resolved but we can continue work uh, basically negotiating on this subcontract. Yes. Yeah, if I'm using a yellow participant and my uh, balance is just drying up and have no more funds into it, I think I have an incentive to not resign a new allocation. And... Um, sure, yes. So that's definitely something that, uh, that uh, might not be too nice, that, that you have sort of silent bystanders that do not have a stake in, in your contract. Um, and, and they might be malicious and not con uh, contribute anymore. At this point, you might uh, you might actually just create an update that sort of ratchets this this forward and drops the yellow participant. And then you can confirm that on the on the blockchain, but at the same time still be operational and still do stuff in there. Yeah, on the other commitment transaction for the other. Transaction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Um, but sometimes silent bystanders are exactly what we want. We, don't, we want people that do not have a stake themselves, but are sort of aware of what happens in, in the contract. So uh, think, for example, of an audit. If you have an auditor in your contract that can see what uh, stuff that happens and can sign off on, uh, on changes, uh, he, doesn't have to, uh, he doesn't have to have a stake uh, himself to, uh, uh, to be able to track what happens inside of this contract. So sometimes. Having somebody with a with a um, without stake uh, stake is sort of the desired state. Um, so we we've just discussed on how to drop a person from an existing contract. Is there a way to onboard people into uh, into the uh, into one of these? So if if I were, for example, uh, a green participant, could I join this contract? I mean, it can even if you use something like L2 and use the I guess state number, you're, you're still able to double spam and mm -hmm. you, you write a new allocation. Exactly. So, so, you can't really so, so dropping people is, is sort of is doable, um, but you have this the, you have this additional uh, intermediate hop where you basically have uh, uh, where you drop this and, and make this a two of two instead of a two of three. Uh, but onboarding is is really hard. Uh, if the if the onboardee does not trust the uh, uh, the group that uh, that is already in there, or if he doesn't trust at least one of the people that are in the group, then I could I could basically make a copy of this and on, onboard Antoine, and I could have another copy where he isn't, and the third copy where Jonas is in, uh, and then and, and then we suddenly are double spending stuff, right? Because I could send to Antoine and I could send to Jonas. And, it, it gets really weird. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, there, is, there are proposals for what's called state chains, uh, uh, but they tend to be a bit more reliant on a third party to actually give, this, uh, give these assurances where, uh, where you have somebody basically vouching that this has only been signed once and this is the state that you actually have right now. But, uh, um, Something like off secure the bag and some government magic. Well, that that's all on chain, right? It, as as long as we're as we're off chain. Yeah, but if you can predict the new state, if you can force all the party into the chain on the next state, on the next, I mean they don't have incentive to broadcast this on chain, right? Well, if you are sure that's it. 
I'm, I mean, this this is just three of us, and and then we can do whatever we want uh, as as yeah. interaction, so so that so that you can't. No, I'm the great participant, and you give me a new location, and maybe we can trick the first location to do a covenant on the second one to force it to integrate my. But key that 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 would already mean that I was aware that you might join, right? So why didn't yeah, I include hard. you initially? So or some blank key. And we can replace with this ones, maybe. Yeah, it gets it gets really hard. So either you have have a provision in there to eventually onboard somebody that you already know might join, or it's really weird yeah. uh, of a situation. So that in that case, we revert back to having this this I mean, trust the right double spend problem. Right. Yeah. It's 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 the off chain version of of the double spend problem. Exactly. Uh, so this kind of dynamic membership would be really nice because then we could we could basically have somebody enter the room and they would be able to interact with us and we wouldn't have capacity issues we wouldn't have multi hop issues we wouldn't have CLTVs it would all get so much easier but we just don't know how to do that yet so maybe one of you guys will come up with something right hopefully so um, this doesn't work with Ellen Penalty. This does, it's really hard for LM penalty because to revoke this uh, this stuff, you uh, you exchange loads of revocation secrets and you always have this situation where the last person that is giving out the revocation secret might, might basically uh, do some really nasty stuff. LM penalty is, uh, in this case, makes it hard because you always need to know who to punish in case something ends up on the blockchain. So that's you end up with multiple. Like if it's three parts, you just end up with three different variations of the same. Thing. Yeah. Well, actually, multiple of that because you can just copy. Right. Because you need to copy. Right. Right. Each, each person needs to copy. Right. And you can have copies. Yeah. Three of each, so there's nine actually penalty transactions. It, it it gets it it basically gets the state explosion, and that's exactly because of the asymmetry, right? Right. Because we have this asymmetric state. Symmet a symmetric state makes it so much easier because you just have this, okay, this is the last transaction, I don't care about anything else.